Good morning and good day, everyone. Today we're going to talk about photographing Zabriskie Point. What is Zabriskie Point, you say? Well, it's an iconic uh, location in Death Valley, California, where photographers gather every single day with their tripods, dozens of them, to try to capture the iconic image of uh, Zabriskie Point. So it's one of those places like Tunnel View in Yosemite or Moraine Lake in Canada that's known all over the world. So today what I want to talk about is giving you some tips and tricks on making your best photograph at uh, Zabriskie Point. So the first thing is, is it's a morning location. It's a dawn first thing in the morning location because of the orientation of the viewpoint and everything. So uh, getting the best photograph involves getting up here pre-dawn. So what I like to do is set my alarm for about an hour before sunrise and I'm usually camped down uh, Furnace Creek area and I've got a um, proper camper van so what I like to do is just wake up drive the van up here get my get a nice spot in the parking lot at the perimeter of the parking lot so I have a nice view and nice area to stage and then just wait uh, for sunrise and while that's happening I uh, make myself a cup of coffee and sit here and enjoy my coffee and this way I'm all situated and ready to go the parking lot generally does fill up but that's not the end of the world because you can park along the road. And what that does is basically it's about a quarter mile, short quarter mile hike to your destination, uh, the lookout. And if you end up having to park down on the road, it might be make it into a half mile. So it's not a big deal. Then uh, usually what you want to do is you want to get your tripod set up. You want to get set up and just as at first light and then you just kind of wait it out. And you may find yourself photographing at before the sun actually comes up, because sometimes there's some drama before then. And otherwise, it's typically the first, you know, 20 or 30 minutes after the, the sun uh, peaks over the horizon is the best time. Now, for those of you who say, well, wait a minute, you know, I, I'm, I, just, I just want a nice photograph. I just want to bring my iPhone up there. I don't have a tripod. I just want to get a nice photograph, and I don't want to get up at, uh, oh, dark 30. That's fine. You can come up at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, all day for that matter and get it get a decent photograph so i'm just talking about getting that super iconic awesome perfect photograph the other thing is is it's nice to have some drama in the sky and the, you know the best sky for photography is you'll see it like a, a part, partly cloudy so you got sun peeking through and creating uh, dapples of light that, that that are more more dramatic and uh, death valley being what it is uh, pretty much all summer there's usually not a whole lot of drama in the sky so generally the winter time is a better time to photograph when there's there might be some storms up north pushing clouds into death valley might even get a few sprinkles here like we did last night today is new year's day i prefer to come to death valley in the months of late november december january into february i don't particularly like hot weather so um that's just my thing. A lot of people enjoy coming to Death Valley and experiencing the heat. Uh, the average daytime high in July is 116 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's just way too much for me. And also camping is pretty much out of the question um, when it's that hot. So I like to come in the wintertime and that increases your chances of having uh, drama in the sky. So equipment wise, generally uh, there's there's different perspectives you can you can take normally a normal wide angle lens like a 24 millimeter to 24 to 35 is where you're going to get um your 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 best images uh but sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a telephoto and you, there's there's other uh things you can focus on for tighter shots so um i tend to bring i like to be covered in the range of about 24 to 200 and then i'll shoot at various focal lengths but if you just wanted to bring one uh, smaller telephoto lens, something like a 24 to 70 or 24 to 105 would be perfect. And if you got primes, just bring just bring bring a bunch of like a 24, 35, 85, 135, and that should be plenty. So now once you get out there, there's there's more or less enough room for everybody in their tripods. The sooner you get there, you might get a little bit more of a prime spot, but. Um, there's, there's plenty of room for everybody. A tripod is a good idea because, you know, with cameras now with IBIS in in-body image stabilization and lens stabilization, you don't, tripods are not as necessary as they used to be. But what a, tri a tripod enables you to do in this case is if you are capturing shots before the sun actually rises and it's still a little bit dark, that'll allow you to keep your ISO down low because you want a lot of detail in your landscape shots. Anyway, that's it for the tips of uh, Zabriskie Point. 
All right, so here we are. I forgot to mention there is a bathroom here. And you can see that it's first light. First few people are showing up. Being that it's New Year's Day, I don't think it's gonna be very crowded here. Okay, you can see so the car is starting to stream up here. And there's this paved path up to the lookout. You may be able to see a few people up there at the lookout. And I forgot to mention that there's sort of a paved area with a wall around it at the top of the lookout. And that's the main lookout area. But the photographers tend to gather at a spot just below that. You just hike down a little bit and then it puts you right on the edge. Gives you a slightly better shot. Good morning. Okay, there's having himself a bifter. And you start to see what we're talking about here. Okay, so here's the stone wall at the top where people are gathering. And what you want to do is right before the stone wall starts on the right side, you cruise down this way. <clears throat> Strangely, there are no photographers down here yet. I've never experienced that. But again, it's New Year's Day, so I think part of the reason why you want to be down here is sort of the, if I don't do it, somebody else will. And if there's people down here and you're up on the lookout above, there are going to be people in your shot. But if you're at the edge of the rim here, there can be no people in your shot. All right, so now you see the way the view opens up and you start to see <clears throat> The wash, the gray wash down there. And that's what makes the photograph so amazing. So this is where I'm gonna set up. So this gentleman, uh, the white-haired gentleman was kind enough to come over and ask me if uh, he would be bothering me if he was over there. And it turns out he's down here to renew his uh, marriage vows after 40 years with a lovely white-haired woman there, a uh, very sweet man, and uh, yeah, how cool is that? All right, so I'm all set up here, ready to go, and I'm going to show you on the, uh, the back of the camera what a 24 millimeter perspective looks like. Well, I think the standard lens on the iPhone is 26, so that gives you an idea what it'll look like, and there's the going to be kind of hard to see but that's that's the uh that's the 24 but anyway that's a nice perspective and then if you go to the iphone with the uh i think it's what is the the wide on a iphone pro 13 like a 15 millimeter or something i mean that's okay but the peaks in the distance get really kind of diminished that's so i kind of prefer that this is the 26, and then this is the, what is it, 56 on the iPhone? And then you see you can get tighter images like that. It worked pretty well. And then you get the distant peaks, and then you can, uh, I can show you, there's Telescope Peak over there. That's a little better perspective. With the... All right, well, thanks for tuning in and checking out this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I've got a lot of fun adventures that I do, and check those out so until next time thanks for watching oh man that beer just tumbled out of the tumbled out of the van and punctured got dirt in there it's half empty because it kind of sprayed out from the top right here you can't waste the beer even though it's eight o'clock in the morning right I was going to have a second cup of coffee, but this will have to do. Not bad.